Hello everyone, welcome today to the review for the end of year exam. As you know, this was broken up into two different sections. Section A was on Edmodo and was either multiple choice or fill in the blanks. You already know the scores that you got for that. Section B was done over exam.net, therefore needed marking by teachers, so you don't necessarily have the score for that yet. What we're going to do is go through both of these sections. This first video just focuses on section A, the multiple choice and the short answer questions. Okay then, the first bit of section A was a balancing chemical equations. So I always divide up the sides, make a list of what you've got on each side. Mg stands for magnesium, so you keep them together. Capital O stands for oxygen. Whatever you have on the left, you must have on the right. So I'm just going to copy and paste or, or write that out twice. Um, got one magnesium there because there's no numbers in front of it. I've got two oxygens here because there's a two to the right hand side of that oxygen. That means they are joined together in a compound. So there are two lots of oxygen. On the left hand side there's no number next to the magnesium so there's just one of it and there's no number next to the oxygen so there's just one of it. Okay let's try and get these to actually match. Um, there's two oxygens on the left hand side but only one on the right so we're going to have to double the entire molecule that the oxygen is in which is this MgO thing so I'm just going to put a big two there. Now that's double the entire thing. So now on the left hand side, I've now got two lots of magnesium and two lots of oxygen. That has made my both of my oxygens match together, which is absolutely great. But I've accidentally screwed with the number of magnesiums I've got. So I've now got two on the right hand side and only one on the left. So all that I'm going to do is put a big number two just there. So that now matches. OK, so we were looking for two, uh, one for that one and a two for the MGO or OMG. <laughs> okay, question two, what is this asking for? Ammonium chloride NH4Cl is made up of that, that and that, yeah. Calculate the relative formula mass of ammonia chloride, okie dokie. So we've got N, we've got H and we've got Cl. How many n's have we got? Well, there's no number there next to the n, so we've just got one lot of n. We've got a 4 next to the h, so that's 4 lots of hydrogen. And there's no number after the chlorine, so that just means that there's one of them. Now, what we need to do is multiply them by their relative atomic masses, which actually they've given us here in the question, which is kind of helpful. That saves you having to look through the periodic table, doesn't it? So uh, nitrogen is 14, so 1 times 14 equals 14, even I can do that mental maths. Uh, the hydrogen, each hydrogen is worth 1, so that's 4 times 1 is 4. And the chlorine has got a relative atomic mass of 35.5, so times by 35.5, which again is just going to be 35.5, that's pretty easy to do. If you add all those together, you should get 53.5. Question three. Coal is used in power stations. Uh, when coal is burnt, it releases combustion pollutants. Now that comes up in the next few questions again. Um, that's just because it's all part of the same original question. OK, uh, sulfur is an impurity in fossil fuels and sulfur reacts to produce a gas which causes acid rain. The gas that causes acid rain, the main gas anyway, is sulfur dioxide. Clue for the answer if you didn't know that, well it definitely has to contain sulfur somewhere in that answer uh, and sulfur dioxide is the only chemical that we've really talked about that contains sulfur in its name anyway so that's kind of a way to get that answer if you didn't already know it. Okay so question four is a continuation of the same question kind of, uh, so it says 4b, it would technically be 3b but Edmodo got a bit confused, so I just put B. Uh, give one effect caused by acid rain. Uh, kills cows in the fields. It's not that flipping acidic, goodness me. Uh, so no. 
blocks light from plants so they cannot photosynthesize. For it to block light, it would need to be quite dark. Um, and it's not, it's colorless, so no. Damages forests all around the world. Uh, acid rain can do that. So let's just give that a little tick for now on the right hand side and double check the other answers uh, that they don't make sense. Um, increases rate of reproduction in coral no we did actually talk about carbon dioxide levels in particular increasing the acidity of the oceans which is very very damaging to the coral so coral plus acid equals ouch it is not going to help them reproduce uh, and then the last one rivers become more alkaline that doesn't make sense if you're adding an acid it's not going to become more alkaline is it that's just silly so all those other options didn't make sense the only one that made sense is that one there uh, again, this was a continuation of the previous one, so I just called it C, despite the fact Edmodo called it 5. Incomplete combustion of coal may produce carbon monoxide. Oof, we do not like carbon monoxide. It is scary. Uh, yeah, that actually says it's a toxic gas. We don't mess around with carbon monoxide, people. Give two reasons, okie dokie, why people might be unaware of the presence of carbon monoxide um let's have a look through these options then it is not detected by alarms or detectors uh yeah it is there's something called a carbon monoxide detector so that one's nonsense it gives off uv radiation i mean me me what is that even about um don't know we can't really detect uv with our eyes um certain cameras and things can um, but no, that, that kind of sounds a bit rubbish to me. Uh, it is colourless. It is colourless. And that would be a reason why people can't see it. So let's use our senses there. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to see it. So that sounds good. It can't be heard. As far as I'm aware, no gases can actually be heard. <laughs> but some of you got a cheeky thought running through your head there. Um, Let's just go no, because no gases can really be heard, except for some obvious exceptions. Uh, it is odourless. That means it doesn't have a smell. So that's a really good suggestion. Um, it is a natural gas. How does that link to people being unaware of its presence? It, it doesn't. So that's absolute nonsense. It isn't a natural gas. Again, that doesn't link to people being able to see it or smell it or feel it or whatever. Uh, it is a greenhouse gas. No. Okay, so the only two that really make sense in there is the fact that it's colourless and it's odourless. That second one is just weird. Let's just ignore that one. Okay, so that's question five done. Okay, six. Let's have a look. The amount... Oof, I hate that word. You know I hate that word. Percentage. Ah. Our carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere has changed since the Earth was formed. Yes, we know about that. Carbon cycle, evolution of the atmosphere, done, done, done. Uh, the amount of carbon dioxide continues to change because of human activities. What is locked up carbon dioxide? Locked up carbon dioxide is when it's stored typically in uh, maybe water or probably more likely rocks. So let's have a look through these answers and see if any of those match that. Uh, the, purpose, the process by which carbon dioxide is harvested and stored in fire extinguishers. No. Uh, when carbon is released in an endothermic decomposition reaction. Well, it says released. If it's been released... That's not going to be locked up. Um, with endothermic decomposition, some of you year 10s will know what endothermic means. Um, and you might have heard of decomposition, but we've not really talked about that sort of concept before. And anyway, it says released. So, nope. Third one, uh, when there is a balance between the composition of the sea and the air, this is known as equilibrium. Uh, that is, that is the definition of equilibrium, but it has got nothing to do with locked up carbon dioxide. So, ignore. This is what you get when volcanoes emit ammonia, the remaining molten solution settles. Again, that makes no sense in the context of this question. Uh, carbon dioxide from the air that has been reacted with, absorbed by rocks such as limestone. There it is, okay, it's that last one, okay? Locked up, that it's kind of been locked away or absorbed into something, for example, water or rocks. Limestone is a type of rock, a sedimentary rock. Okay, 
This one, uh, question seven, uh, it's not seven, it's a continuation of the previous thing. It's working on the Earth's atmosphere and that carbon level changing. Uh, this question does also come up in section B as well, the longer answer question set on exam.net. So you have seen this graph a few times now. So what we're we looking at in this one, uh, give two reasons why the percentage of carbon dioxide has changed. OK, so once again, we're looking for something related to the carbon cycle. So things absorbing carbon, emitting carbon, uh, that's what we're looking for here. So what options have we got? Uh, living things, including plants, produce it through respiration. Respiration is taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide. So that's a definite maybe. Let's give that a little bit of a squiggle there for a maybe. Uh, carbon dioxide was emitted from volcanoes and ammonia reacted with oxygen to produce this and other gases. That doesn't really make any sense, so let's get rid of that one. Carbon dioxide was sequestered into bodies of water. Yes, this sounds good to me. And then the last option, carbon dioxide decreased because plants took it in and used carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Uh, they did and they did, so that makes sense. Looking at the graph, we can see here that the carbon dioxide levels started pretty high and that they've gone quite low. So the main change that we're trying to justify here is actually a decrease in CO2. Therefore, the bottom two, they do match to a decrease, whereas that top one, despite the fact that it is correct, so living things, including plants, produced it through respiration, that would actually release CO2. And based on the graph, we're trying to justify why we would get a decrease of CO2. So it cannot be the first one. It's got to be the last two. OK, the next part linked back to that graph still. Uh, the data in this graph was collected by a single scientific group. Give two reasons why more evidence is needed to support any conclusions made by this scientific group. OK, big reason why we do science the way we do it. We always check on each other's findings, OK, um, to check if things are correct, if they've been done correctly and that people aren't fibbing about what they've found out. Uh, a nice way of saying that is the first bullet point there to avoid bias. So I'm just going to tick that one straight off the mark. That means, for example, um, if a company said that McDonald's burgers are healthier than Burger King burgers, um, look into who's doing that research. If that research was funded by McDonald's, of course they're going to say that, okay? They have a vested interest in you believing that, okay? We're, so whenever possible, we have studies done by people that have no link to that original concept at all, okay? They'll still be within that scientific, but they won't have any links with the company, let's say. Uh, let's keep going. To be sure about the number of samples, that's a bit vague and waffy. Let's just kind of wiggle that. Uh, to prevent companies from copying their work, um, no, that's called copyright or putting a patent on it. So that's, that's not that concept. To conduct a peer review, yes. To conduct a peer review, yes, that, that's a very good way of doing it. That's, that's what we do in science. We do peer reviews. Other people check your work to make sure you're not cheating, that you've not made it up, um, that your results are actually reliable, really. Uh, to make it reproducible, if something is reproducible, that just means um, different people can do the same practical, the exact same way that you did it and get the same results each time, um, which is what would kind of happen, but doing that in itself wouldn't make it reproducible. That one kind of doesn't make sense in that context. Uh, to make it repeatable, again, it doesn't make sense in the context. Repeat is just if the same person does it again. Reproducible is if somebody else gets the same results again. Uh, to defy God. Uh, no. Uh, to make Mrs. Mrs. Bateson happy. Now, obviously, I know that's very, very important to you all, uh, but it's not why... It's not why we produce more evidence. So uh, thank you if you put that, but it's not that one. Uh, so um, the first one to avoid bias, definitely yes. To conduct a peer review, definitely yes. To be sure about the number of samples, no. To be sure about the number of samples, you just recount the number of samples. So yeah. So uh, the top one and the fourth one down. 
Okay, what's this one asking for? This is another one that uh, it's come up in section B as well. It was a similar question. I just copied and pasted different bits into the different bits of the tests, uh, the exams. Um, so let's have a look. Oh, it's a balancing equation one again. Nice. If you're good at balancing equations, this is easy. Ooh, although look at that. That's a little bit tricky there. Uh, okay, let's make a list of what we've got on each side. So you've definitely got Fe stands for iron, so there we go. You've definitely got H's standing for hydrogen, capital S standing for sulfur, capital O standing for oxygen. Now, this sort of weird thing over here, the Fe2SO43, that means that there's three lots of everything in that bracket. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write SO4 above it two more times. So actually there you can see there's one, two, three lots of that. That saves you maybe uh, from getting a little bit confused there. Uh, whatever I have on the left hand side, I must also have on the right hand side. So I'm just going to copy that list straight over there as well. Uh, iron on the left hand side, I've got one uh, here. Here I've got two hydrogens. I'm going to do this one as a tally chart this time instead of just the numbers, uh, just because I find that easier. There's one S and there's four Oh, so one, two, three, four little dashes there. On the right hand side, I've got two irons there. I've got one, two, three lots of sulfur here. One, two, three. And then I've got one, two, three, three times four, 12 lots of oxygen. Um, now I am going to write that as 12. <laughs> uh, and then over here, I've got two lots of hydrogen. Okay, where to begin? Um, I don't like dealing with odd numbers. Uh, and over here, we've got some odd numbers coming from the sulfur. So let's get rid of that. The best way to get rid of um, any odd number is either to double it, or what we might try and do instead is I might just put a three on this side and see what happens. With balancing equations, it is trial and error. Okay, so let's just see. Let's do it with three this time. So I'm going to put a three in front of this entire thing. So that's three times that entire lot. So that means now that I've got three lots of sulfur. So I've now got three lots of sulfur on the left hand side. Uh, I've got three times two lots of hydrogen. So that's three lots of H2. So three times the two is six. So let's just scribble that one out. And we've got six lots of hydrogen now. Um, and oh my days, three lots of four of oxygen. So three times four is 12. Oh, this works quite well. Look, look, look because now we've managed to match the oxygens there and there. I like this. Hopefully they'll stay matched. Uh, so the oxygens match now. The sulfur matches now as well. Um, okay, we've got six hydrogens on the left-hand side, two on the right. Uh, if I times two by six, I get three. So I'm going to put three there. So now I've got six over here. So six and six. Okay, that works. I've got two ions on the right hand side, only one on the left hand side. That's quite easy. I can just go two. And it does say don't leave any space blank. If you think there's one, put one. So there we go. Uh, two, three, one, three. Okay. Now that was a slightly trickier one to balance. Um, on a real exam, that would be closer towards the end of the paper because that is a uh, trickier one to do. Okay, so that was section A. Section A from Edmodo is multiple choice or short answer or fill in the blank. That section was out of 13. If you go to your Edmodo account, uh, I think I've managed to unlock it now. So you should be able to see uh, what you've put as an answer and then compare it now to our corrected answers. In the next video, I'm going to go through section B, the longer answer questions, which as yet you don't know how you've done on. So please head on over to that video next. Goodbye for now. Bye bye.